Today we're going to be learning about chromatic shading, how to blend colors in highlights and shadows to make your pictures look more lifelike, more rich and full of color, and more realistic. And we're going to make an outer space picture. How much cooler can you get? Welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. So here I have a spectrum. Now, it may not be a spectrum that you're used to seeing. You may not have ever seen white to blue to green to brown to black spectrum before, but this spectrum is very important for, well, for if I was going to light a green object with a blue light. That's, that's what this would be important for. What if I wasn't lighting a green object with a blue light? Well, then I wouldn't care about this spectrum. I would need a different spectrum. What if I was lighting a blue object with a yellow light? Well, then I would need this spectrum. What's the difference? So you can see they both start at white and end at black, or start at black and end at white, depending on which way you're looking at it. But interestingly, they have different colors in between. And what's the idea? How do we get them? Well, let me show you. I'm going to start by creating an outer space scene where we have a blue planet that is lit by a yellow sun. Now, you might be wondering, wait a minute, the sizes don't quite look right. Well, okay, so the sun is smaller, which means it must be farther away, which means it's going to be lighting up the backside of this planet and a little bit of the rim on this edge. And then most of the planet is going to be in shadow. Well, this is where my spectrum comes into play. A lot of people think that they need to mix white into the highlights and black into the shadows to make their picture look more lifelike and realistic. And that would work to an extent. It would look spherical if I make the highlights with a white and the shadows with a black, but it would not look like it is being lit by this sun because this sun is yellow, not white. So the highlights should not be pure white unless it is a really intensely bright shine. If maybe there was a glossy, shiny, like if this was a marble, then even a yellow light would reflect a bright white highlight at the shiniest reflective point. This ain't no marble, this is a freaking planet. So my highlighted side should be between the color of the object, which is blue, and the color of the light, which is yellow. So between blue and yellow, I have green. How do I know that green is between blue and yellow? Well, I could look at a color wheel to find that out, or I could just mix those colors together. So I could take some of the light color, the source of light color, and mix it into the paint that is already there and see what happens. It turns green. I don't want the highlight to be that big, that huge, because it's, um, it should only be a rim light because the sun is kind of farther away. So it's going to be mostly highlighting the backside. So what I'm going to do is wash my brush real good, dry my brush on a paper towel, and then come back to my original color, my, my descriptive color, the color of the actual object, in this case, the planet. And I'm going to blend some of that into the yellow that I just put down until it's sort of a smoother, softer transition. There, I've created that rim light pretty good. Now, what about the shadowed side? Should I just throw some black in there and call it done? Well, I could, but it would look ugly. Why did I put purple in this spectrum between blue and black? Well, black would be the deepest shadows if there was absolutely no light shining on something. So I might use a little bit of black in here, but mostly I think I'm gonna use purple for my shadows. Why? Well, because my light is yellow. Well, what does that have to do with purple? 
Take a look at a color wheel and you'll find out. Yellow and purple are opposites on the color wheel. They are directly across from each other on the color wheel. So if my light source is yellow, my shadows should be the opposite of yellow, which is purple. So grab some of that purple and work that into the shadow side. So as you can see here, this planet with a yellow highlight and a purple shadow looks like it's actually being lit by this yellow sun. And you might say, well, that's great, Mr. New, but what if I don't want a blue planet being lit by a yellow sun? What if I want a green planet being lit by a blue sun? Well, you have a different spectrum, that's all. It's super easy. Let's check that out. Let's see what that would look like. So here's what that spectrum would look like. And you might be saying, but, 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 but wait, Mr. New, brown? Well, why is there brown here? You go from white to blue to green to brown to black. Well, I don't, well, okay, so here's what's happening. If you have a green object, that's the color in the middle. If your source of light is blue, the shadow is going to be the opposite of blue. What's the opposite of blue on the color wheel? It's orange. What happens if you mix orange and green together? You get brown. So the highlights are going to be the blue. The shadows are going to be the brown. But the way that I get that brown is by mixing an orange with my green. Now, here's the thing. If your shadow color is bright, like orange, you're also going to have to mix a little bit of black, but not a lot of black. Check this out. Blue sun, green planet. Blue to mix into the highlight because it's the source of light. Wash brush. Dry brush. Orange for the shadow because it's opposite blue. We are also gonna need a touch of black, but not much. Let's do orange first. Notice how the orange mixes with the green to make a brownish color. Notice that isn't dark enough. So, black on my brush. That's probably already too much, but we're gonna try it and see. Follow it up with the original color again to blend into that edge so that it's not such a hard edge. Now, I think that looks really dark because of the way the camera and the light is shining and stuff. So I'm just going to let this dry. So there, that, you know, it transitions from the blue to the green to the brown, which is green mixed with orange. Just a tiny touch of black mixed into it to make it a little darker. So... With that thought in mind, understanding the light source color and its opposite on the color wheel and how you blend those into the highlights and shadows, I'm going to add a couple of extra planets to this picture, all using yellow for the highlights and all using purple for the shadows. But I'm going to have them different colors so they're not all going to be blue. And we'll see how it comes out. So here I have made a pink, a brown, and a purple planet. And uh, the purple one is probably so dark that it looks like black on the camera, but I promise you it's purple. Notice that yellow highlight is on the side facing towards the sun. Notice how that yellow mixed together with the pink to make an orange. And then the shadow color is gonna be some purple. And I should mix some of the original pink into the gap between. Same with my brown planet, yellow. On this side, because that's the side close to the light. Clean and dry brush, purple on the shadow side. Notice that that's not just a pure purple, it's purple mixed with the brown. And I also need to just make sure I transition some brown in the in-between space. So here I have a purple planet. Well, I, I can mix the yellow into the highlighted side, but then if I mix 
purple into the shadow side is just going to still be purple. Wait a minute. Okay. This is where the whole spectrum is useful. If my object is purple, what's going to be the next dark after purple? It's going to be black. So if I'm, if I'm doing a purple object and I mix purple into it for the shadow, that's not going to do anything. So I have to go to the next step. So it's going to be black. So here, mixing yellow into the highlight is going to turn it into a tannish brown color, actually. And then I need black for the shadow. Clean and dry brush in the in-between space between the shadow and the highlight. Go back to my purple, blend that in so it's a smooth transition. And there, those planets are gorgeous, beautiful. I think this one's probably so dark it doesn't show up much on the camera. Maybe it will after it dries, but all that's left, I think, for me is to scatter some stars in the distance. I might do that with a yellow. I might do that with a white. I might even do that with a peach. I don't know, any kind of bright color. And I think I want the sun to have some more texture to it. I don't want it to just be one solid color here, so... And then stars, tiny dots, spread out. Make sure you leave some big gaps and some where they're really close together. Some where there's big and small real close. I'm done. I'm gonna let this dry then show it to you dry. So see, this is mostly dry now. I think you can pretty much see how it's coming together, how the colors are blending and wow, looks, you know, like space. And most importantly, it looks like all of these objects and the sun are all together in one space. And the sun is the light that is shining onto those other objects. If I had to change anything, I think I would make the stars a different color, maybe white or maybe, uh, you know, beige or something. I think just having them all yellow kind of clashes a little bit with the yellow that I have in the foreground. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to mix colors with paint today and how to make a three-dimensional object look more like it's actually being lit by whatever source of light is in your picture. And I hope you've enjoyed using that technique to make an outer space picture with me. If you learned something new from Mr. News Art Class today, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time.